Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about the key management service or KMS for short. So here we have a user Jack and they want to encrypt uh, their password, for example. Could be any kind of sensitive information. In this case, it's a password, go CloudWolf. And what they're going to use is KMS, uh, which is a public regional service which manages cryptographic keys for applications and services to secure data. So basically it's a facility that AWS provides for you to be able to create cryptographic keys and store them and uh, encrypt uh, certain pieces of data. So here we've got a cryptographic key that Jack has created. And an important thing to note that KMS is a very secure. So first of all, the cryptographic key is never stored in plain text form. It is encrypted itself. So even the key itself is stored in encrypted form and that's to protect it. And moreover, uh, these keys are stored on hardware security models or modules or HSMs, which uh, comply with certain uh, standards, uh, certain they have certain certifications for security standards, and that's important to know for the exam. At the time of recording, the standard that this complies with is FIPS 140-2 Security Level 3, and I'll put that in the slide notes, of course. Um, so yeah, so it's very secure. Not only is uh, the key not stored in plain text form, but even if somebody goes into the AWS facility and tries to tamper with the hardware, it is designed to fail on purpose so nobody can access your keys. Now, next, Jack will need encrypt permissions. We assume that he has them in order to use this key, you know, uh, to encrypt, to, in order to use this key to encrypt uh, his password or his secure data. So with those encrypt permissions, he'll get access to this key and then he can use it to encrypt his sensor information. Now, keep in mind that KMS can only encrypt data up to four kilobytes in size. I know it's very small, but that's because of the way it's designed. It's designed to encrypt um, passwords, sensitive information, uh, other keys, as we'll see in other tutorials, and so on. It's, uh, design, it's not designed to encrypt application data. For that, for like large volumes of data, we need to use data encryption keys, and that's a separate tutorial that we'll have. But for now, for the exam, remember this uh, limitation, four kilobyte of data in size maximum. Okay, so we've encrypted the sensitive information, and now we have a user, Sally, who wants to decrypt it. Sally has decrypt permissions to use the key. She accesses the key and decrypts it using that key and gets that information. Now, there are three types of keys in KMS. There are customer managed ones, which you create, you manage, you uh, rotate, you do whatever you like with them. Uh, there's the AWS managed ones, for example, uh, in the EBS service or in the RDS service and other services where AWS creates a key. You cannot manage it. Uh, AWS will uh, do everything what it needs to do in terms of managing, but you can audit it. You can find out who uh, accessed it and when and why and things like that. So you can do that with both customer managed keys and with AWS managed keys. You can audit them. Very uh, powerful feature. You can integrate, it integrates, uh, KMS integrates with CloudTrail and you can check all these things and look out for the questions about that on the exam. And finally, there's AWS owned keys, for example, the SSE S3 key. Um, and you don't even see these keys. So AWS uh, has them. They're used across multiple accounts, not just your account. They're all in the background and you can't uh, manage them, can't rotate them, can't even audit them. So keep that in one, mind as well. And finally, in terms of rotation, so here we have a key. It's got an ID. It's got its key material. Uh, it's got some other um, meta information, um, you know, when it was created and things like that, which account it applies to. Uh, but the main thing is that when you rotate a key, meaning you change the key material, uh, so it's like uh, more secure that way, your key ID doesn't change. The key ID stays the same. However, the material does change, which is the purpose of rotation. And at the same time, there's a saved key material, which is still attached to this key um, so that you can <laughs> decrypt uh, things that you encrypted a while ago using this key uh, in the past. So there you go, that's how key rotation works and that's how KMS works as well. Here's a quick summary of what we discussed. Uh, look out for all these things on the exam and please pay attention to this table. It's got some useful information. I look forward to seeing you back here next time and until then, enjoy the cloud.